This video explains how to troubleshoot bad pixels on a string and determine which pixels may be bad. Now in this particular example we will be using Holiday Coro's Tiny Pix Pixel Controller and we're going to first show you that uh, we have COM22 set up for the programmer. We're going to load up the Tiny Pix programming software and we're going to go to programming controller. I'm going to do a read. It's going to pull back my settings. We're just going to go ahead and set this to 170 pixels. That's the maximum that can be output. And in this particular example, we will be testing 2801. That's four wire. So you want to go ahead and make sure that your controller is properly set up for the controller or type of pixels that you'll be using. All right. We're also going to set this up for no ghost pixels here. And we're also going to be setting up for test mode. Now in this particular case we have red, green, and blue alternating. And we're going to go ahead and write those. Read them back. Copy them over. And you can see we've got 170 pixels. Four wire, 2801. And we've got a red, green, and blue alternating test sequence. Now that means that we're ready to go and that means we can go ahead and hook up pixels to the controller and know that the test sequence will go ahead and run and we don't have to worry about troubleshooting something like LOR or X lights or some sort of DMX output. So it takes one more piece out of the puzzle by using the built-in test sequence. All right, now let's go to the hardware portion. Now what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've hooked up a power supply. Now one caution on the power supply, make sure that your power supply is sufficient to power the node you're testing. For example, if you've got 300 of these nodes hooked up or however many, you need to calculate the maximum current draw of these nodes because if you hook up too many nodes and your power supply is not sufficient to power those nodes or lights or RGB lights or whatever they may be, they will not function correctly. So that'll throw you off. You'll think that they're working and they should be working, but you'll get erratic results because either the power drops or the power supply cuts in and out depending on your particular model. Now, so we've got our power supply. We've got it hooked up to our controller. We just showed you setting up the controller. We've got it set up for, in this particular case, WS2801 pixels. These are 12 volts. We've got a 12 volt controller here. Now on the Tiny Pix controller or your particular controller, whichever, you're going to have some marked locations on the controller output. Uh, you're going to have positive negative for the voltage and the clock and data. Of course, you want to make sure that your voltage is correct. So if you've got 12 volt pixels, you need to test with, test with 12 volt power supply or five volts and a five volt power supply. Now. Some other things that you're going to need here, you'll need a screwdriver or some other tool to uh, attach the pixels. Uh, you'll need a pair of dikes or strippers. Um, if you're going to be cutting up and splicing them, you'll need some solder. You'll also need a soldering iron. And you'll need this or something equivalent. This is just a uh, small torch. And here we have some shrink wrap tubing because if we find a bad pixel, we'll need to cut out that pixel and then replace it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first what you want to do is refer back to the vendor's instructions on the wiring. Be sure that this is correct. Don't just make any assumptions. So in this particular case, we have several pieces of information. We have the voltage, 12 volts DC. We have the directional indicator. If you hook the pixels up backward, they will not operate or will operate erratically. So there is a forward and a reverse. So some particular pixels are obvious. For example, here we have some rectangles and we have in, out, in, out. So in this particular case, we would not want to hook them up to the controller on this end because that's the output. We would want to hook them up on this end, which is the input. So follow the instructions. Each particular pixel is different. Don't assume that the pixels you found on the web are the same ones that you got from the vendor. Okay. And these particular pixels, um, we have negative is blue. So first of all, don't assume that some of your presumptions about voltage and colors are correct. So for example, blue is negative, but you'll see in this particular node, there's a black. So you might think black is negative. That's not true. You need to look at the specific instructions contained with your pixels. 
So we have blue is negative 12 volts, black is positive 12 volts. See how backwards that seems? So you would not want to hook them up backwards. Hooking them up backwards could damage it or may not damage, or it may damage just the first node. Next we have green is data signal and red is a clock signal. Now some pixels will just have a data signal and no clock signal and that varies. Uh, in 2801 we always have four wires. Now it also has a note for the directional indicator and it says side of node with IC chip is input side. So in this particular node we have no IC on this side. If we flip it around we see an IC. You can see the little black IC. So that means that this side is the side that we do as the input. So chip on this side, this is the input, that's the output. So let's go ahead and uh, we're just going to go ahead, cut off these wires and start from scratch here. We're just going to hook up a test pixel. Now it's good to hook up a test pixel, just one. That makes sure you got your wiring correct and make sure if you blow anything up, you're only gonna blow up one pixel. Now most pixel controllers are going to have some fuse uh, if you overcharge, over draw the amperage or you short it out directly, your controller is usually fine if you have a, a good quality unit. Uh, so what we're going to do is just strip those back with my dikes and I'm just going to take these pixels and I'm just going to run the wires together so they don't get all mixed up in the controller. Now again, in this particular controller uh, we have uh, negative is blue. So now first thing I'm going to do, now this controller is on right now, you can see the blinking light. First thing I'm going to do, unplug it. Make sure that there's no power going to the controller while you're hooking things up. That's just asking for trouble. So first is negative, and in this particular case, we have negative on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that in there. Negative, and the negative is blue here. I'm going to screw it down. All right, next we have data next to the negative, and the data is green. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up my data signal. Now make sure that you're making good contact in there. And once you're done, you're going to want to give these a little tug. Sometimes it can appear that the cables are actually attached, but really actually now, uh, they're not actually connected. Now next here we got the red, which is our clock. And finally, our black, which is positive, again. In the US, that seems kind of backwards. You would think negative would always be black. So never make presumptions about anything. Always check everything. Trust it, but go ahead and verify it. All right, I've gone ahead, give my pixels a, no, a little tug here, make sure they're all hooked up. You also wanna make sure that if you have a string of pixels if that they're going out at the other end, make sure that these are not stripped off and shorted because you could short them at the other end. All right, we're going to go ahead and plug in the power. And here you can see we've got a red, green, blue, and it's uh, flashing quite rapidly. Now this is where the test sequence is very useful. I don't have to worry about my computer being set up right. Do I have my dongle or output or my E131 hooked up? Or do I have the right channel programmed? Or is this the right DMX channel? You don't have to figure out anything. Just hook it up and it should start doing something. So your controller should have a test function that allows you to do this. So that means that we have things correct. So, what we're going to do, go ahead, unplug the controller, power supply, and I'm just going to go ahead, unhook the wires here, and we're going to take a string, which we don't know if it works correctly or not, and we're going to hook it up. Okay, we're back here. I now have a string. You can see I've got my first three nodes. We get the third node, fourth node and then this node does not work, and the remainder of the string doesn't work. So, what we have here is one of two possible problems. One, there could be something wrong at this node. So clearly this node itself works, but maybe the wiring on the other side of the node coming out is incorrect, or there's something wrong with the input wiring or this particular node. Now, you can go one of two ways. You can either one, you can cut out this node right here before the one that works and then go one after and lose two nodes. You'll take out this one in case it's bad, but you'll also take out this one. That wastes one node, but that means you also only need to do one splice if there's really only one bad node here. What we're going to do is we're going to take a more conservative approach, uh, not waste this pixel, and we're just going to come right after this pixel, 
cut, and then we're going to cut out the bad one, and we're going to re-solder that. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and remove the power. So we had after our third pixel, we're going to go ahead cut the pixel. So now we've got our three good, or what we believe is our three good pixels, and we're going to take our fourth pixel, which we believe to be bad, and we're going to cut that out out of here. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, strip back the wire on that one, and strip back the wire on this one, and I'm going to separate the wires here. And, just like I did before, just give them a twist so that all the wires are together, so that they don't uh, create a little bit of fraying. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, your input-output should be just fine. You're going to be coming in, remember, into the one with, in this particular node's case, into the one with the IC. That's the input side. So, we're going to go ahead, again, do that. And we're going to take our soldering iron and take a little bit of solder. And we're going to tin the wires. And all that involves is just putting a little bit of, little bit of solder on those so that they have solder on them. One, that'll keep all the wires together. And it means that whenever we go to touch them together, to solder them together, we won't, won't need to actually put any solder in because there's already solder on them. So we're going to do that to both sides on there. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and just put a little bit of shrink wrap on there. Now, you may think, oh, well, that shouldn't be bad pixels. These pixels should work. Don't they test them at the factory? They do, and sometimes they don't. It depends on your vendor. Uh, some vendors, they just do a real quick test. They don't do any lengthy tests. Sometimes the chips fail after a short period of time. Sometimes they're out in your display. Sometimes there's mechanical damage. You'll uh, stretch the wires and break the wires inside or at the circuit board or some other thing. Now what I'm going to do is take my shrink wrap. I'm just going to slide it over. Now I've separated all these wires. I've put a sufficient amount of shrink wrap. Now this is clear shrink wrap. This is useful for uh, figuring out if you've got your connection completely soldered. So we'll take our soldering iron. In this particular case, because these are the same nodes, it's just a matter of matching up the nodes, putting a little heat on the wires, and whoop. Then we need a little bit more solder here. And touching them together. Now, in no circumstances would I ever suggest that you should do anything other than shrink wrap. Shrink wrap is the de facto method to make these splices. Yes, it's a little bit hard. Um, no, you can't use wire nuts or other types of things. Shrink wrap and solder is the only accepted way to properly make splices. And if you're scared a little bit by doing soldering, it's going to be part of RGB and DIY. You'll have to do it. It's not hard at all. There are tons of different videos on YouTube on how to do it. All right, just going to give them a tug, make sure that they're actually all good. And sometimes people will actually not shrink wrap them down until they've gone ahead and made sure that the splice until they've tested them but you also risk shorting them during that period of time so I'm just going to go ahead hit them with the heat that's going to shrink down create a nice waterproof seal All right. so now I have my connection now we're going to go ahead just power it up we power up our controller and as you can see here we got one two three four so in this particular case you can see that all the remaining nodes are working fine so that one node that we did remove here was the bad node. It could happen that you might go another 10 nodes and then you have a bad node. So this is how you go ahead, remove, locate, and repair RGB nodes, modules, those types of things 
if you have bad ones. Again, this is completely normal. These do go bad and expect that you will have to do this, especially if they've been out in your display. Again, this is uh, Holiday Coral, and we hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us on our website.